What's up you guys? Welcome back and welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys just exactly how to install a CBI off-road dual swing out bumper. The cool thing about this bumper is you can add a lot of accessories. As you can tell, I do have my spare tire on this side. And then let me show you guys once I open this up. On this side, I do have a high lift jack as well. And right here, you could either put some jerry cans or you can put roto packs, which is what I'm going to be doing. Another cool thing about this bad boy right here, as you can tell right here, you do have a drop down table that you could use for when you're cooking and you're camping off road and then let me go ahead and open up my tailgate just to show you guys you still can utilize it so you can also have another drop down table right here and just kind of have a full on camping kitchen setup so if you guys do want something that's super versatile super strong because this bumper is steel and just a high clearance bumper for those off-roading moments so you don't bang anything up and the cool thing about this let me show you guys really quick and then we'll get to the installation video the cool thing about this bumper you still can tow with it so let's go ahead and now get into the video and I'll show you guys exactly how it's done All right, you guys, so like we stated in the beginning of the video, we're gonna be installing a CBI off-road dual swing out uh, bumper onto my Tacoma. Just to show you guys before we install it though, as you can tell, that one there is the stock bumper. As you can tell, we've already abused it. Anybody that does own a Tacoma, you guys do know these bumpers are very cheap and they fall off really easily. And of course, now with this brand new one here, it is gonna be a high clearance and it is all steel. So when we do go ahead and hit it on the trails, nothing's gonna happen. Another cool thing about this right here, of course, like I said, it is a dual swing out. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you guys just all the features that you guys can get if you guys do wanna buy this. Another cool thing, this company does make different ones, not just this one. So check out the description box below. So now, if you guys do need an installer or anything like that, I have Jerry right here. He could explain a little bit more on that. Yeah, how's it going guys? So, well yeah, like Gacy was saying, um, if you guys ever need any help like installing any aftermarket components in your trucks and all that, you know, we don't, we don't care what's the brand, what's the, was what it is you know it doesn't matter you know we always hear guys for um you know to help you guys out with that so uh in this case we're gonna be installing the cbi bumper dual swing out uh we're gonna be putting jesse's truck under the knife right now so uh but yeah i mean anything you guys need just let me know all my information is gonna be in in the box below so yeah let's get it done right now what they're gonna be doing is they're basically gonna be uninstalling all the components like the rear bumper tow hitch and a bunch of other little things that need to come off in order for us to actually install the high clearance bumper. Another thing I did want to note, so if you guys are installing a high clearance bumper like this, just what that means is basically, as you can tell right about here, uh, we're going to need to cut just something like that. So we are going to be cutting the body, just that way the bumper, like I said, it fits as a high clearance. Uh, this company does actually make different ones, like I was stating, you could either get it with no swing outs, you could get it with dual swing out like me, or you could get uh, one swing out, or you can also get just a bolt-on bumper. So of course, this one is gonna uh, take a little longer to install because we do need to do a lot of things to it, but it's gonna be awesome. At the end of the video, you guys will see, of course, I'm gonna show you guys the features on it. But like I said, if you guys don't wanna do any cutting or anything like that, you guys do want just a bolt-on bumper onto your Tacoma, they do make it. So check out the description box below. Of course, that would be a lot easier to install. So let's get it. you guys. So the first step here, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna start disconnecting all the sensors. So, so I know not all Tacomas have them, but mine does, as you could tell, I had broken this off, but there's the wires for it. And then on this side, as you can see, I have the sensors there. So he's gonna be disconnecting all that stuff and then the wiring for the tow hitch as well, as you could tell. Uh, and then once we do that, then we'll start unbolting everything. So when you're underneath the truck, you're gonna notice right there what he's playing with. That's on the driver's side, of course, on the rear. Oh That's gonna be the uh, connection for the tow hitch, the wiring. So all you do is you just go ahead and pry it out with the flathead screwdriver. After you do that, you wanna go ahead and disconnect it. There's a couple tabs right mm -hmm. there and right there, those two, and you just pull uh, out. Pull out. Yeah. So if you have someone on the outside, it does help out as well. Yeah. Just like that and it comes right out so this harness here since it is connected to the bumper uh, that one we're gonna go ahead and leave it but noticing right here that harness that connects into the actual truck 
the connections. Uh, those we are gonna remove because then we will damage them if we don't take those off. Exactly. And same thing, uh, they're just little tabs, one there and one there, mm -hmm. and you pull them right out and the harness will release. As you can tell, we've now disconnected the two harnesses, which these ones connected to the stock factory harness of the truck. Mm -hmm. So this over here is staying with the factory bumper. So up next, now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually start removing the bumper off. So we're gonna start unbolting everything. Let me show you guys. All right, you guys, so just for reference, as you could tell, I'm underneath the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and come right in. So you're gonna notice right here, there's gonna be a couple bolts. So one here, one there, there, and there. So this one's gonna be a size 17 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove these. But just for your own safety, after you removed most of them, you wanna at least leave one just so the bumper doesn't fall on you and kill you or just hurt you. So as you can tell, we left that top one right there just for our safety. Now we're gonna repeat the same steps onto the opposite side. And as you can tell, we left that one that's right up there. Now that you removed the ones on the side right there, now you wanna go ahead and come right underneath the truck. So you're gonna notice there's gonna be a couple more bolts. So there's gonna be two there, which is gonna be the same 17 millimeter socket. And then there's gonna be two on this side as well, which there's one right there and one right there. Those are also a 17 millimeter socket. Let's go ahead and get it. All right, and once you do one side, of course you wanna repeat the same steps. All right, you guys, so for this next step, as you could tell, if you guys do remember, we had said leave one bolt in right there and then one on the opposite side as well. So for this next step, what you wanna go ahead and do is get a second hand like we have here. So that way the bumper does not fall on you and get hurt, of course. So right here, you also wanna get something like this type of tool right here. Um, you're gonna need to kind of pry it open. So you could leave the bolt still because right here, as you could tell, there's kind of like a notch there which will allow the bumper to slide right out. Uh, this bolt is more kind of like a securing mechanism so that way it doesn't fall just yet. So like I said, make sure to get a tool just like this and you're gonna be popping it off. A reason why, it's gonna be kind of hard to see it, but on this side here, there's a couple of rivets uh, kind of holding it in. So when you go ahead and pop it, you'll see the bumper just start getting loose and you wanna do it one side at a time. So we're gonna do this side first and then we'll move to the opposite side. You see that like little rivet in the notch right there? So let me show you from the opposite side. This is why you need to kind of pull it out. So it's those rivets there, which are here. So going back around, let me show you one more time. So as you can tell, it's right up there. So right here. So by you putting this in there, it kind of releases it. And then after that, you're gonna need to kind of bring it up and out. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. We just popped it off as you can tell right here. So it was sitting down here. Uh, we just kind of use, like I said, this and just kind of your force of your hand to kind of push it up and out. So it goes up and then it comes out right here. So now that we have this side done, let's move on to the next. This is kind of when you do have that second hand to go ahead and help you, just so that way that bumper does not fall on your head. So now we're gonna be doing the opposite side. We're gonna be doing the same steps. Right. So as you can tell, it's right in between. So up next, we're gonna do the same thing. As you can tell, it's almost there. Just need to give it a little bit more, a little bit more play. More. Just to show you, this is how a Tacoma looks without a rear bumper. So now that that's off, that was the easy part. You guys will see the next upcoming parts to this. But of course, and now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna start measuring. Reason why is we wanna go ahead and measure 100 times. So that way we just cut once. Make sure you guys read the manual. That way you guys get this done correctly. Now, if you guys don't trust yourself, of course, you guys have Jerry right here. Like I was saying, he'll do everything for you guys, no problem, and at least they'll be done professionally. So if you guys do want to attempt this at home, go ahead by any means, but if not, let Jerry know, description box below. And now that we have that bumper off, up next, we're gonna go ahead and now start cutting. So let me show you kind of what you wanna do if you guys are getting the same CBI off-road bumper. So what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is you're gonna wanna measure two and three quarters down. So you're gonna measure from the bottom of the tail light right here, and you're gonna measure down. So it's gonna be kind of hard to see it on camera here, but uh, when you see it in person, there's kind of like a little notch on your bumper there, and you're just gonna, it's gonna kind of basically be around that area, as you can tell, we marked it here. So you're gonna measure one more time from here all the way down, it's gonna be two and three quarters. So make sure you guys measure it like 10, 20, 30 times because you don't wanna mess this up. Once you cut this off, you can't go back. So measure it a bunch of times and make sure on that. And then another thing we did wanna know, if you guys are getting a CBI off-road bumper, take note. 
You cannot just go straight forward because when you go to put the bumper on, you're gonna have a humongous gap on this side. So it actually has a small slant. It's kind of hard to see it, but it is gonna have a small slant. So on this side, where you're gonna wanna see is right here, you're gonna notice there's gonna be actually a hole on your fender liner, as you can see it right there. And your measurement that you wanna do there is you wanna be right in the middle. So that's kind of where we have the tape is right in the middle of that hole. So let me go ahead and pull this back. So there's the hole and we put the tape right in the middle of that. That's where we're gonna be cutting. Uh, up next, what you're gonna wanna notice is right here. We're gonna need to cut down. So as you can tell, we've kinda marked it. We still need to perfect it, but we're gonna be cutting right here. If you do not do this part, the bumper will not fit correctly, so you do need to do that. All right, so of course, once you finish up one side, now you'll go ahead and do the same exact steps to the other side, and then we'll get to cutting. All right, you guys, so once you have it cut like this, up next, what you wanna go ahead and do, as you can tell, we did not remove the bracket that's back there because we wanted it to kind of hold in place while we cut, so that way we don't mess up the cut. So now that we did cut it, inside for the bracket, there's gonna be another two. Those are gonna be a size 10 millimeter socket, so you wanna go ahead and remove those and this whole thing will fall down. And just like that, you have your cut. So you wanna go ahead and do the same exact steps that you did on this side to the opposite side. And of course right here, we're gonna go ahead and grind it down just to make it nice and clean. But as you can tell, it looks good. It's super straight. So let's do the other side now. you guys so now that we have everything sanded down it looks nice and clean that sanded down looks good up next what we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, noticing right here it's a little bit wobbly so the cool thing about CBI off-road they actually uh, provide you with some supporting brackets which is what he's um, wrapping right now um, and we also wanted to take no I probably should have said this in the beginning of the video but as you can tell I mean it is a bunch of pieces so whenever you're working with something big like this you do want to kind of spread everything out kind of how we have here but yeah I just wanted to take note on that and like I said we are gonna now start working on the support brackets if you do not put these you're gonna get some wobbling like this and that's not gonna look good and over time you might end up denting up right here or something like that so that's what we're gonna be adding right now in this step now we're gonna be using the supporting brackets which are right here you're gonna get two of these bad boys here and you're gonna get provided screws it's gonna be two of these as you can tell it's gonna come with the bolt and then it's gonna come with one of these nuts right here so it's gonna come with two of those uh, one for each bracket and then another thing you're, that you're gonna need to get is you're gonna need to reuse two of the screws in this piece here the bracket that we took off that was on your left side right over there those two screws that you took off from there you're gonna need to reuse those which are these here so we're gonna be reinstalling them in that same section there. Now we're gonna go ahead and get started with the bracket. So you're gonna notice on the bracket, you're gonna have like an L like that. And then this side just goes straight with two holes. The two holes are gonna actually line up into the factory two holes that were there from the factory bracket that we took off. So that's what he's gonna do right now. And then on the opposite side, he's gonna go ahead and now screw in the factory bolts that we had taken off. We're reusing those. So as you can tell, those two. And he's not gonna tighten it down just yet, he's just gonna kinda snug it up. And then we'll show you guys what's next. Once you have that there, you're gonna wanna bring up the supporting bracket, just about right there. So you wanna have it nice and clean and flush. And what you're gonna be doing here is you're now gonna go ahead and get a Sharpie, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and mark the hole there. So that way that's where you're gonna put the brand new bolt through, so that way this thing has a supporting bracket, as you could tell. Now it's nice and stiff compared to the other way without the bracket. So let's get a marker now. You can tell he's gonna bring it back up. Like I was saying, at this point, you wanna get yourself a Sharpie. And he's just gonna line it up so that way it's nice and clean. So when he marks it and drills it, everything's perfect. There's the mark, as you guys can see it. And as far as the drill bit that we're gonna be using, it's a 5 16th, just so you guys know. One thing to take note, if you guys notice, he didn't cut all the way through. You wanna just go ahead and cut out from the metal section. Do not go all the way through the plastic. It will not look good and you're gonna have a hole outside for no reason. So for this next step, as you can tell, there's a orange clip that's right there. All we did was release it. Reason why is that way, looking over here, this fender liner, that way we can kind of pull it back a little bit and it'll help us put the nut right in the center. 
and then we'll be able to screw it in a lot easier. As you can tell, he's putting the head bolt right in through there, just like that. As you can see there, it's already through, and it's through all the way through the other side. So now we just need to push it, of course, a little bit more, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab our bracket and bring it back up, and then we'll go ahead and put the brand new nut, and then we'll reinstall that uh, screw that we had taken off there to kind of help us with the leverage here. And then we'll be done with one side and we'll do the same thing to the opposite side. As you can tell, this is how you should have it. Of course, it's still a little loose, so we do just need to tighten it down now. But we've reinstalled that second screw as well. So now we're just going to go ahead and tighten it down and we'll do these same steps to the opposite side. So as you can tell, we just have an open boxed wrench on this side kind of holding the screw. Or, and then the other side, we're going to have a ratcheting wrench to go ahead and tighten it down just like that. While he's doing that, I did want to point out, if you guys do remember, I, wanted, I had said make sure you guys do kind of cut slightly angled down, kind of where we had pointed to you guys on this side. Uh, reason why is uh, one, like, I, like we said, the bumper does slant down slightly. And second thing, uh, if you don't cut correctly, the bracket that we're installing right now, it'll actually be showing if you cut too much. And you don't want that because now you have to modify the bracket and just nothing's gonna really fit right and it's gonna look really ugly. You do not want that. As far as for us, we did cut correctly. As you can tell from the side here, you can't even see the bracket at all and everything's nice and secure. This thing ain't moving, it's like factory. As you can tell, wobbly, let's fix that. For this next step, what we're doing here is of course now you're gonna have access metal just kind of poking out and you don't want rust over the time. So what we're doing is we're just kind of painting over it. So we sprayed a little bit of paint in the cap and we're just kind of dipping it in and just doing it by hand. Uh, this makes it a little bit more easier and it's easier to kind of maneuver yourself around. So that's all we're doing. We're just painting the surface and then we'll get to the next step. Like I was saying, uh, right now we're just kind of painting both sides uh, just to kind of prevent it from rust. Right, so for this next step, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go underneath the truck and of course, this is the harness that was for the actual tow hitch. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting off all the zip ties kind of going forward. So that way we can pull the harness a little bit more forward. You can do this after the installation of the bumper, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So we're going to do this right now. Like we said, we're going to kind of cut some zip ties or any tape kind of holding it back so we can pull the harness forward. Of course, here's the tow hitch harness. So it's going to go all the way around that way. There's going to be a bunch of clips kind of holding it in. It holds it into the frame, so as you can tell, that's one of the clips we took off. And there's just another one up here. Once you take them all off, as you can tell, it's a lot more loose. And looking right over here, now we can actually pull it back a lot more. So that way it can plug into the brand new bumper. So of course, now that we have that harness kind of pulled out a lot more, uh, up next, we, of course, we've now painted this as well. So the next step to go ahead and uh, make this nice and clean, you're gonna notice here, there's some edge trimming that comes with the CBI off-road bumper. So as you can tell, it's all there. So that is basically gonna go right underneath here to kind of give it a nice clean look. You guys will see right now. So for this type of uh, rubber trimming, um, on the outside it is rubber, but inside there's actually a little bit of metal in there. So you are gonna need like some wire cutters or just something like that to go ahead and cut through it. Because uh, this whole string here is gonna be for both sides. So of course you're gonna need to cut it. And then he's gonna go ahead and start right on the edging. And cool thing about that, it slides right in. You just kind of have to work it. Uh, sometimes it does get a little bit hard, but it works right in. Anybody can do this. All right, so right now what he's doing is he's kind of pre-measuring. A reason why, because if you guys do remember, we did put a bracket underneath to make this uh, support bracket. Um, and then after he took it off and cut the measuring off, so that way when he goes to slide it right in, it fits right over the bracket, just like that. So as you can tell, he's gonna go ahead and slide it right in. So you could cut right about here or about here. We're gonna cut right about down here just to make it nice and clean, of course. But like I said, the bottom section, you're not gonna be able to see it because that's where the bumper actually sits. Now we're gonna do the same exact step to the opposite side. So if you guys do remember in the beginning of the video, we had told you guys to leave this bolt here from the factory bumper, as you could tell it's there. And then of course, let me show you on the opposite side. So we still have that bolt right there as well. These are actually, these are acting as guides. So of course they were acting as a support so we don't drop the bumper on, on our legs or anything like that. And they're actually gonna act as guides. Let me show you why. So on this brand new CBI off-road bumper, you're gonna notice there's a notch right here. 
and on the opposite side there's also a notch right there so that is actually going to slide into those bolts there so that's why we said not to take them off uh, so they're still going to be there and we are also going to be reusing the factory other bolts that we took off to go ahead and install this, install this new one but before we go ahead and now finally install the new bumper on we're going to need to take off this bracket here uh, as you can tell it's held in with these like uh, rivet push pins as well like we did earlier so we're going to kind of break it off and this whole bracket needs to be released to actually install the brand new bumper you guys will see let's get it so right here you're, you're going to want to go ahead and get a pry bar um, and put it right in between just like that and it releases the bracket and of course you want to do the same thing to this side as well that was easy <laughs> now that we have uh, those brackets off it helps out if you have two or three people as you can tell this bumper is made out of steel so of course it is going to be heavy I'm not gonna lie so that helps out and like I said if you guys do remember we have those notches on the brackets one there and one there and that's what's gonna slide into the bolts so they're just gonna kind of pre-fit it and then they're gonna align it so that way it hits those uh, bolts and then we'll go from there so what Jerry's gonna do right now is gonna he's gonna reinstall the factory bolts of course we're gonna do one set at a time uh, just looking down here so he's gonna put the two bottom ones just so that way we make sure that it's uh, secure all right so we're gonna do the same thing to the opposite side all right so now that they're tightened uh, we're gonna do the ones on the outside of the truck so what I mean by the outside I mean these ones here which were the three and like I said that's still the factory hardware there And reason he's not snugging it down crazy is we still need to uh, check it for alignment and then if it's aligned and then also uh, we need to work on that there as you can tell that is not lining up just yet uh, so we still need to kind of maneuver it but let's put the bolts on the opposite side and then we'll go from there so now that that's done like we said uh, we're gonna focus back over here to try to get that bracket to align and for that bracket, CBI Off-Road does actually offer the bolts and everything needed to install that. So there's one on this side and of course there's one for the opposite side. So we're going to go ahead and now grab the hardware. For this section here, you want to go ahead and grab the baggie that has the grade 8 uh, bolts like this, which are the gold ones. It's going to come with two of these. It's going to come with two of these silver nuts. It's going to come with two of these square thick washers. And it's going to come with two of these smaller washers here. And then it's going to come with a couple extra washers as well that are a little bit slightly larger in size. So the way you're going to kind of assemble this is going to be like this. You're going to notice. Jerry's going to show you guys. So I'm going to grab the smaller one pretty much. The smaller one. And then obviously you're going to slide it into the bumper and then through the bed. So the bed is going to be right here. Right? So, and then this big washer is gonna go in the back and obviously your nut is gonna be on the other side, okay? So like this. So they provide you with a lot of um, extra washers like Jesse was saying right here. So because sometimes between between the bed and the, and the bumper, you have to put them like the something like this. So in order to fill that, that gap out, you know? So you have a bunch. I, I usually use use like two or three of them. There's not a lot of them, but um, just to let you know the, the the process of it, you will see it right now on the bumper. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and now start. So looking underneath the truck, you're gonna notice that bracket there. This is the one we were talking about that you're gonna kind of have to align it, and that's where we're gonna be using that brand new hardware that CBI provides. So as you can tell, he has the grade eight uh, bolt going through with the washer. And then on the opposite side, that's where he's going to be using uh, the nut and the square washer. So noticing here, let me show you one more time. So here's the bolt, here's the washer. Opposite side, you want to go ahead and put that square washer and then of course the nut right there. So we have it loose right now uh, so we can kind of pre-align everything and then we'll torque everything down after. <clears throat> All right, so of course now that we have that installed, as you can tell, 
So now we're gonna go ahead and do the opposite side. We're gonna kind of put it on there. We're not gonna torque it down. We're just gonna install it. Once we put that in there, now we're gonna focus back to the front bolts here, uh, which were the factory ones. And those are the ones we're gonna start torquing down. And we're gonna kind of push up the bumper by hand, just push it up while he's torquing it down. And then once all the three bolts here and three bolts on the opposite side are done, uh, then we're gonna go ahead and of course also torque down these two bottom ones and the two bottom ones right there. And then we'll go back to the back bracket there uh, just to kind of help us align it some more. We want this as clean as possible. We don't want a half-ass job. From there, he's gonna now torque down the three on the side right there. Of course, now that you guys tightened all those factory bolts back down, we're gonna go back to those brand new bolts that we just put through on both sides, one's there, and of course, one's on the opposite side right down there. Uh, so now on this step here, uh, what we do recommend, since they are adjustable, those bolts there, um, you can go ahead and put a uh, jack right here and just kind of jack up the bumper slightly and then adjust your, uh, of course, bracket and then tighten everything down. As far as for us, our cut was super clean and good. So we don't really need to do any adjusting. All we need to do is just bolt it down. So that's what we were saying in the beginning of the video. It's better to measure it 100 times if you need to. That way you have a nice clean install. If you guys measured this incorrectly, then you have to kind of adjust more things and it's just not gonna turn out right. To finish tidying down one side, now you wanna go ahead and torque down the opposite side. Same steps. All right, you guys, and now the bumper is actually installed. It's fully secured. It ain't gonna fall anymore. So now all we gotta do is now, of course, start putting all the accessories like the swing outdoors. If you guys didn't get the one with the swing out, so you don't need to worry about that. But as far as for us, we did. So we need to put that. And then of course we need to reinstall a couple other factory things that went here, like my license plate and the tow hitch harness. Cool thing about CBI Off-Road, I believe I stated this in the beginning of the video, but it does come with a receiver already. So you don't need to reinstall your factory one. All you need to put back is gonna be the uh, connection for it. And then of course, some lights. Now you wanna get your factory uh, hitch connector and you just go ahead and slide it right in. There's only one way to put it in, so you can't really mess this up. It snaps right in, just like that. And then of course you go underneath the truck and then you reconnect the harness to it. In the baggie, you're gonna get some hardware. You're gonna get black screws like this with the little nuts like that. You're gonna wanna go ahead and use that with the provided light, just like this. If you try to use those silver ones, those are gonna be if you wanna screw it in. But of course, our bumper actually comes with pre-cut holes, so we don't need to screw anything in like that. We just need to use the provided screws and nuts to go ahead and bolt it on. This wire is not long enough to reach our tail light since we do have to tap into it. So you do wanna get some wire to go ahead and run into your tail light. I'd say, I'd recommend tapping into your uh, passenger side one because it's a lot shorter from there to there. <laughs> And one thing you do want to take note on that light, uh, it is directional. So as you can tell, on this side is the lens. And if you look at it on this side, it's just blacked out. Reason why the lens is pointing in, of course, because your license plate is going to be sitting here. All right, you guys, so really quick, I'm going to show you guys just exactly how to wire up your license plate light. Come right over here and let me show you guys something. So before we get started, I did want to notice. Uh, so there isn't a plug and play application with this. So you actually do have to do some uh, wiring, but it's actually really easy. Uh, so don't get intimidated. And one thing I did want to know, on these lights, your black one is actually going to be your positive and your white one is going to be your negative. And we're going to be tapping into the tail light, but like I said, it's super easy. Let's go ahead and now get started and I'll show you guys. All right, you guys, so before we do the wiring, I want to show you guys just exactly what tools you're going to need to do this install. So I don't want to sound like it's going to be intimidating because it's not, but it's a couple tools. Let's show you guys. So like I said, this is going to be super easy. Don't get scared. So what I have right here is just some heat shrink. It's going to be some uh, solder and seal connectors this is just to make the wiring a, a nice clean install if you guys don't have this you guys can use something else but that's what i'm going to be using for today i'm going to also be using these spades right here and these little I guess self tapping screws and then the next thing as far as tools what you're going to need is going to be a wire cutter just something like this 
some wire splicers. If you guys don't have this, you can use a blade to kind of splice up the wire, but these are really good. And then the next thing you're gonna have right here is just some wire crimpers. I'm using these because I'm gonna need something to crimp down these spades, so that's what I'm gonna use that for. And then I have this right here just to kind of crimp down as well, but this I'm gonna be using to actually connect this. So basically what this is, this is gonna be a wire tap. This is what I'm gonna be using for the tail light section. Uh, the wire's gonna, the tail light wire is gonna go in through one side. As you can see, it's just like see-through all the way through. So the wire will go through there. And then in the back end over here, it's actually covered. So on the covered section, we'll be putting the new wire in through there. You guys will see when we get to that part, but this is basically what I'm gonna use to crimp this down. And then what I have right here is just some extra wire. I was fortunate enough to find the same color wiring that the license plate lamp comes with, which is black and white. So that's what I have here. And then all I used was just some uh, sheathing. I, I think that's what it's called or wire covering. And I put it right over the wire just so it looks nice and clean when it's under the bed. And then this is just another heat shrink that I'm gonna utilize to make it nice and clean. And then as far as our other tool here, uh, you're gonna need to get a size 10 millimeter socket because that's what you need to remove your tail lamp. We're gonna be working on the passenger side. That's what's closest to the actual license plate light wiring. So you wanna make it as close as possible. That way you don't use that much wire. And then you're gonna need, if you guys are using like the solder and seal connectors and heat shrink just like me to make it nice and clean, you're gonna need a heat gun or you can also use a lighter if you don't have one of these bad boys all right you guys so like i said we're going to be working on the passenger side tail light so it's going to be right here so you're going to want to go ahead and get your 10 millimeter socket and you're going to remove this bolt that's right here and then you're going to remove this bottom bolt that's right there let's get it so now you just push back your tail light you should hear it snap off and then you bring it out just like that Noticing right here, there's going to be three connectors. We're going to be working on this top connector right there. So let's go ahead and unplug that one. This is the connector, like I said, that we're going to be working with, the one way at the top. Now that you've located which harness you're going to be tapping into, as you can tell, it's right here. All I did was kind of cut away some of this uh, sheathing here. So that way it gives me a little bit more access. So we're going to be working with this green wire in the middle. So basically you can do this two ways. Uh, you can either cut it and tap into it that way, or you can use one of these type of connectors. Cool thing about these bad boys right here is these, they literally just slide right in. I wanna make sure it's all the way through as you can tell. And then on this other side where uh, there's the wire that, the new wire that we're gonna be putting in, that wire doesn't go in all the way, but it goes enough to contact the other side of the connector. You guys will see right now. So of course, now that I have my black and white right here, the cool thing about these connectors, I don't have to splice open anything. I just literally slide it right in all the way until it hits the back. So once you can't go further, now all you do is you literally go and you bring it down. Make sure it goes in all the way for a solid connection. And all that's doing is it's cutting into both wires, connecting a, basically connecting them together. And that was super easy and it makes it for a clean end install now you just put the flap right over which is like the locking mechanism and now it's tapped now for the white one that one we do have to splice open i'm gonna go ahead and splice it right open right about there is fine and this is where we're gonna be getting our spade so what you're gonna be doing is with the spade is now this is gonna go over the negative which is gonna be our white wire put in uh crimp this down all right and once you have a solid crimp give it a little tug make sure it ain't gonna fall all right you guys so of course now that you have your uh, wire tapped and over here we do have our negative. So one thing you guys can do, if you guys notice right here, there is like a, a bolt uh, bolted into the bed. That one you can use it as your negative, so you can put it there and then just go ahead and find yourself a nut with the same thread pitch and it'll be that easy. So now if you guys don't know how to find a thread pitch, you can a self tapping screw, which is what I used here as you can tell. And now all I have to do is put the wire right there and then get my drill and just drill it. Now that we have our wires connected and everything like that, as you can tell, I still have it connected to the tail light. What we're gonna be doing next is, and now the other side of the wiring, what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed it through the bottom. As you can tell right here, there's a cutout where wires are going through. So you wanna go ahead and feed that right through as well. Now you wanna go underneath the truck and pull it all the way out. That's what I'm gonna do now. One thing I did wanna show you guys, look at this. It's already working for me. So whether I'm out camping or just home trying to wire some stuff up for the installs for you guys, this table's already working. Shout out to CBI. So let's go ahead and now shoot down here really quick. 
So like I was saying, now what we need and that's left over is just basically to tap these wires in, just color coordinate them and we're good to go. So of course white goes with white and black goes with black. So this is where we're gonna get our uh, wire splicers and our heat shrink and our solder connectors. Let's do that now. We're gonna be color coordinating. So let's go ahead and uh, splice these open. I like to use these uh, solder and seal connectors, kind of like a heat shrink and also soldering. As you can tell, it has the solder right in the middle. So I like using these because it just makes it for a nice clean install and it makes it secure as well. What you do with these bad boys is you literally slide them right over. And as you can tell, you want it where the solder is. And then same thing with the other side. When you put it in, you wanna make sure it's also touching the solder. Before I do that though, I'm gonna be adding a heat shrink on the opposite side so I can shrink it right over. Slide our heat shrink right over. Just so that way it's like a nice clean install and it looks like there was never wires tapped. Now we're gonna do the same exact steps to the white one, same thing. And as you can tell you guys, now you have a nice clean job. All right you guys, so of course now that we have that nice clean job as you guys can see, looking underneath here, as you can tell, I mean we do have a lot of access. So you can do two things. You can go ahead and just wrap it up and zip tie it somewhere, or you guys can bring it back up over here, just kind of pull it back and then just tuck it at tuck it in somewhere over here as well. So since I brought mine back up, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this and with the zip tie I'm just gonna zip tie this together. Before I uh, put everything back together, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and test this and make sure that it still works before I uh, put, of course, everything back together completely. So I'm gonna leave the tail lamp here and we'll see if everything turns back on again. Tell that thing turned on and the cool thing about CBI off-road they don't give you like a yellow light they actually give you like a nice white light so it's gonna look nice and clean so there's your guys's wiring let's go ahead and get back to the install video and for your license plate bracket as you can see it here it does swivel reason why is because of course how it's gonna sit right here you have your tow hitch there so when you're not using your tow hitch, the license plate will be sitting down. So it's gonna cover it up. But of course, the day you do need to use it, the cool thing about this, you just raise the license plate up and then you can use it. And CBI Off-Road also provides you the bolts and screws that you're gonna need to install this. It's gonna be a bolt-on application for that. Super easy, nothing too hard. Same way you did your little license plate, which a uh, bolt on this side and then a nut on the opposite side, it's gonna be the same thing. Just to show you guys the uh, plate installed, so there's the little bolts there. So now if you do want to use your tow hitch receiver, you can lift this right up just like that. Super easy, nothing too hard about it. So once you put your license plate light and your bracket on, and now you're gonna go ahead and focus onto the doors. If you guys did do this, if you guys did get the doors like me, uh, we're gonna start assembling this. So this part is a puzzle. So make sure to leave a couple hours for your guys' installation, especially if you're doing this at home. Um, it is gonna take some time to kind of figure out everything. So as you can tell, I mean, there's bolts there, we got some wiring there, and then we got some other stuff here. And yeah, it's gonna be fun. Let's get it. <laughs> so of course, now this next step, we're gonna go ahead and now install the swing outs. So we're gonna start off with the right side. Since we do have a dual swing out, the steps are gonna be a little bit longer for us. So we're gonna start right over here. So looking right here, this is kind of what we're gonna be working with, as you can tell. All right, so we're gonna work with the, of course, the right passenger side. All right, so inside the baggie, you're gonna get a seal just like this. It's gonna come inside this box here. You're gonna get two of these. So you wanna grab one of the seals. And then you're gonna get a couple of these bad boys right here, which it should be a total of six. So it's gonna go three for each arm, of course. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab two of these bad boys here. They're gonna go in, slid right there. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and put the arm. And then after that, you're gonna get one of the other ones of these. It'll go right on top of the arm. And then the seal will go right on top of that. And of course, we are gonna have to grease this. So let's go ahead and just show you guys what we're talking about. So you wanna make sure to play with the shaft just like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, you guys, so what Jerry's doing right here is he's actually gonna lube up the pole that's right there where the arm's gonna sit on. You wanna make sure to put a lot of lube. Uh, you wanna lube this up really good so that way it lasts you for a long time, of course. And that way you have a nice, a clean door going back and forth. You don't want it to creak, squeak, or break or anything like that. So the better that you lube it, the better it is. After you've now lubed it up, you wanna go ahead and put one of those bad boys on. 
Uh, you want to do it, try to do it by hand so that way you don't damage anything right here. Um, you might need a hammer, but I'd try to avoid that, of course, because you don't want to damage the paint or any of the seals or anything like that. So he put one there. He's going to put a little bit more of the grease. He's going to put the next one right there, as you can tell. Same thing, just try to do it by hand. And keep lubing it up like he's doing. Like I said, the, the better that you lube it, the better it'll be in the long run. So there it is. So as you can tell, just keep lubing it up. And now that you're satisfied with your lube job, up next you're, <laughs> you're, you're of course gonna go ahead and now get your swing arm and we're gonna slide it right in and we'll show you guys the next step. Damn, Jesse. Damn Jerry, what are you teaching me? No, <laughs> in case you guys are wondering on how you can tell which door goes to which, uh, you're gonna notice there's gonna be a uh, like slanted bracket here. You wanna make sure this slanted bracket is always facing upwards. So like that one, it's gonna go for this side. And then looking right here, as you can tell, here's that slanted bracket. That's gonna be also facing forward. So you want that on this side. Once you determine which side goes to which, you wanna go ahead and make sure you lube it up right inside like that, just like that. I know Jerry's a pro. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and slide the door right here. Now it's installed. You wanna make sure it's nice and flush at the bottom. And now we're gonna go ahead and work on the top end and putting the lube and of course the rest of the seals. As you can tell, he did put a lot. Uh, like we were saying with the bottom, it's going to be the same thing. The better you lube it, the better it's going to last, so as you can tell. And then once you're satisfied with that, then you go ahead and put your next uh, seal. And of course you want to go ahead and lube it as well. Make sure right there. Lift it a little. So what he's doing with his other hand, he's actually lifting it to try to pop the seal in. Um, because if it's not straight, it won't go in, of course. Now I feel like it's supposed to be right there. Just like there this. Yeah. Yeah. Just, so of course, now that we put that seal right at the top, as you can tell, we uh, re-lubed it a little bit more right there. Uh, up next, what we're going to go ahead and do is now we're going to grab the bracket that goes right here. We'll show you guys. Of course, there is going to be two brackets like that. The way you can tell uh, which bracket goes to which side, uh, you're going to notice, say we look at it in this direction, you're going to notice this whole thing here where uh, one of the nuts is going to go. Uh, you want that on your left side. If it's on the right side, then that's going to be your left bracket. Right now, we're working on the right passenger side, as you can see. But on the bracket itself, this section here is actually on the left. So that's how you want it. Reason why is because when you go to open up this door, this right here is gonna actually swing into it. So if you have the other one, it won't allow it to open all the way. Now he's gonna go ahead and uh, kind of tap in the bracket and you're gonna notice, you're gonna get two of these bad boys here. That is actually gonna go screwed into there. So you drop it in and then it screws right in. You guys will see what that thing does later in the video, but that's what you want it to do as you can tell. There it is. So we're gonna go ahead and like I said, tap this in and then we're gonna bolt it down. I want to go ahead and get the bolts that come with the hex head. Uh, it's going to be four of these and then of course four washers. So it's going to be two for each side. So you want to go ahead and screw those bad boys in. Now we're going to move on to the next door which is going to be the same steps. For this next step, now that we've put of course everything together which is the passenger side and the driver's side, right now he's going to tighten it down. But once that's done, you then want to tight in there's gonna be a bolt sticking out right here you want to go ahead and tighten that one down and of course right there where he's at uh, there's also one there once you have those tied in you now want to work on the latch so noticing right here it's gonna actually close onto this so that way they don't swing open and you're gonna to want to notice on the latch itself you're gonna want it in this direction so you want the latch when it's fully open to be facing upwards just like this and when it's closed you want it to be going down just like that so that's the direction you're gonna want it. So up next, we're gonna now grab that same baggie that this came in. It's gonna come with a bunch of hardware. It's gonna come with washers and nuts. So as you can see it there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, grab two bolts for now and two of the washer, or does it come with washers? No, no washers, no? but this one's no. So now you wanna go ahead and grab two of the bolts and we're gonna go ahead and screw them in.
So if you can notice right now, he's putting one bolt on the bottom and one bolt on the top. Anytime you're doing anything like this, you want to kind of cross uh, reference yourself like that. Uh, just that way, when you install the bracket, it gets installed correctly, nice and straight. You can tell he didn't screw them in all the way. He just kind of started them. Now he's going to put the top left and then the bottom right. Once he has all four in, then he'll go ahead and tighten them all the way down. Once you have the nuts kind of just bolted down all the way, now you want to go ahead and this uh, get this like the pin and just slide it right in just like that. You want to make sure that the two holes are showing and then look, uh, we'll show you what's next. And notice uh, it does come with a U-bolt just like that. You want to just go ahead and slide it in. And what you're going to be doing here is you're going to actually kind of measure it out. You want it to lock into place back here. So noticing there's like a groove that it's going into. So here's the groove right there and there's the groove there. Before bolting anything down, you're going to want to put the little stopper that comes provided, which is right there. So noticing it's like some type of rubber or hard polyurethane or something like that. And that's going to be your little bushing to kind of stop it so it doesn't swing in all the way and mess anything up. So it does come with that and it does come with a screw and a uh, nut. Here's the bushing, uh, that screw that does come provided. You want to slide it right in just like that. As you can tell, it's coming right out. And where that's going to go is uh, noticing on the driver's side uh, door right here, you want to go ahead and swing it open. So when you swing it open, you're going to notice right here, there's like a bracket. So right there, of course, there's no hole. Looking right at the top of the bracket, there's going to be a little hole there. So that's where you're going to go ahead and insert this. So it's going to go basically backwards in. So you're going to see here. So you're going to slide it right in, just like that. And then the screw is going to go from the bottom to top. And then the nut will be right at the top, just like that. And you want to go ahead and tighten it down just by hand. And then after, get yourself some tools and tighten it down. One thing I did want to note on the bushing itself, there's like a little cutout right here that's going to help you to kind of put it in flush. Now that we put that bushing installed, now we're going to go ahead and close the doors again. We're going to test fit this so that way we can put that U-bolt installed. Uh, super easy. So right now he's just kind of test fitting it to see where we're going to have to put the nut and how everything's going to fit snug. Once you figure out the size, uh, the first thing you want to do before you actually put the U-bolt in there is you're going to want to put these nuts that are here. So as you can tell, we put a nut there and then we put a nut on this side. And then we slid the U-bolt into this, uh, of course, this okay. pin that's here. And then over here we have the, we put the nylon nuts right here. And then from there, now we're just going to start adjusting everything and tightening it down. So that way we have it nice and set. So when we go to close it, this thing ain't rattling. Of course, once you tighten everything down, that latch should be snug. And as you can tell, I'm moving it and it's not moving at all. So that's kind of what you want. You don't want this thing to be rattling around, especially if you have a 35 inch tire just like me. You don't want that thing rattling because it is going to get annoying and you might mess something up. So it's now tightened and this latch is really hard. I'm super weak, so I'm not sure how I'm going to be opening this, but at least I know it's tight. Now that we have it in this section here, you're going to notice in this section right here is where your high lift is going to go. So they do provide the bolts. As you can tell, there's two bolts here. And then there's also two wing nuts that are going to be provided. So that's where your high lift is going to go. If you did get the same similar one as me, because CBI off-road does actually make different swing outs. So you might have your uh, high lift jack sitting down there or at the top. It just kind of depends on your uh, selection on what you got as far as for your doors. So as far as for me, of course, like I said, the high lift is going to sit here using the wing nuts and these, these two big bolts. And then you're going to also uh, right here notice you can either get a jerry can setup or like me I got the uh, rotopack setup so I'm going to get a five gallon and just kind of have it sitting here. And then on this side over here uh, we're going to actually start mounting uh, the brackets for the 35 inch tire uh, which is the spare tire mount. So that's what we're going to be doing next it's going to sit in this section here. For your spare tire you're going to notice you're going to have a bracket that looks something like this. And you're also going to have another bracket that's going to look like this. So initially what it's going to look like when you install it, it's going to look something like this when you're finished. And then of course it's going to go onto the swing out right there. And then the hardware provided is going to be right about here. It's going to come with a bunch of bolts and stuff like that. And it actually comes with, I believe, three lugs. So that way you can mount your spare tire. Yeah. So you could tell so you're going to want to go ahead and kind of just assort this and just start looking on what you're going to need at first to go ahead and install it 
Okay, so right now what he's doing is he can, he's setting up the screws that we're going to be using as far as installing the bracket onto the uh, dual swing out. So looking right here, you're going to notice it's going to be the bolt, it's going to be a washer, and then one of the nuts that has like a washer into it. So that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to set up four of these bad boys here. That's what we're going to start off with first. Alright, so of course this section here is going to depend on the height you're going to want the tire and it's also going to depend on what size tire you have. As far as for me, I do have a 35 inch tire. So I don't want it sitting too low, but I don't want it sitting too high. So right now we're just going to kind of play with the adjustments. As you can tell, there's a bunch of adjustments there on both sides. And on the bracket, you're only going to have four sections there, just like that. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and, like I said, play with it and just kinda of see where you're gonna want it to mount. Another cool thing with CBI Off-Road, uh, you can either get your tire to be slanted or you can get the tire to be sitting straight up when it's mounted. All right, you guys, so after kind of playing with it, just seeing where it's gonna mount, what we're gonna be doing is you're gonna notice right here, there's two holes at the bottom. We're gonna actually be putting it on the second hole to the top, right here, right here. And then if you're looking at the top, we're gonna actually be putting it on one, two, and the third hole down. One, two, and the third hole down. So that's where the four screws are gonna go. So like I said, it's gonna be a grade A bolt, and then it's gonna be one of the silver washers on the back side, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put one of the silver nuts that has a washer welded on. And that's gonna be the same thing for one, two, three, and four. And then after, once you tighten that down, you torque it down, then you're gonna install that second bracket that goes on top, which is where the actual rim and tire sit. Another thing we did want you guys to kind of take note on, and this is totally up to you guys, but as far as for us, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be putting some Loctite on the back. Right now, we're just kind of test fitting, of course, but right now we're gonna go ahead and take the nuts back off, and we're gonna be putting Loctite on each one. Reason why, especially for me, since I do have 35 inch tires, these things do weigh a lot more than like a regular smaller tire. So you don't want this thing to be rattling and then eventually falling off on the freeway because you could actually kill someone or actually really hurt someone badly. So you want to put the Loctite, just make sure you're safe. And there it is, we're gonna just drench it. Now that we reinstalled the nuts and know where it's gonna be sitting, uh, and of course we put Loctite on it, you're gonna use a size 16, uh, size 16 socket and a box wrench to go ahead and tighten all this down. This next step, we're going to grab this bracket here, which is going to go installed onto here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test fit it and just kind of see where we want it. So of course you can pull it forward or you can pull it backward and just kind of see where you're going to want your tire to sit. Alright you guys, so for us, uh, we're going to actually be adjusting it as far forward as possible. Reason why, since I do have a 35 inch tire, um, if we put it all the way back, it's not going to fit. It's going to actually be hitting the metal here. So if we adjust it forward, it'll actually allow for some back spacing right here. So it sits nice and flush. So we're going to be using kind of the same hardware, which is uh, that uh, grade eight bolt, which is the gold one. And then it's going to be a washer. And underneath here, you're going to notice it's going to have some more of that nut with the welded washer onto it. So we're gonna be putting those all the way around. All right, so like I said, uh, once you guys have it adjusted uh, to where you're gonna want your tire to sit, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get your uh, six grade eight bolts, which is gonna be the gold ones. You're gonna wanna go ahead and get six of the washers. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and get six of those silver nuts that have uh, the washers welded onto them. And basically what it's gonna do is you're gonna put one two, which is two there. You're gonna put two on the opposite side right here and then two right on top. Of course, we don't have it done, but I'm just giving you guys an example. And then torque it down and you're done for that. All right, so of course, now that we have this whole thing installed, up next, what we're gonna need to do is you're gonna notice right here, it is gonna come with three of these silver bolts and you're gonna get some of these like washers that you have to slide over and you have to kind of work your way into it. And once you have them in place like this, these are gonna act as the studs for the tire. And then you, of course, you're gonna get your lugs right here. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and install right now. All right, so the way this works is, as you can see it on that side, uh, you wanna go ahead and put your stud from the back side over here, and then you put your lug on this side. Of course, I don't have my spare tire with me right now. It's actually at home. So once I get home, I'll install it, but we're gonna just pre-install the holes right, or the pre-install the bolts right now, just to give you guys an idea. But now what we're gonna be doing, since I did get the camp tables as well, uh, we're gonna now install those bad boys, and then we'll basically be done. We'll show you guys kinda how this works. 
Uh, but yeah, this is the setup so far. And I did get the camp tables for both sides. So let's get to that now. One thing I did want to point out with the camp tables, if you guys did get it, of course, with CBI off-road, you have the choice of just not getting them at all, or you can get just one, or you can get two. In this install right here, I did get both of them. So there's going to be one that's a lot bigger like this, and then there's going to be a lot smaller one that's over there. So for both of these, you're going to get one camp table. You're going to get two brackets, which he's holding right here. You're going to get a set of bolts, which are going to be in that baggie there. And you're going to get some wire. Uh, you're going to see how we install it, but we just wanted to take note on that if you guys also got the camp tables. So we're going to start off with the bigger one, which is going to be for the passenger side right over here. All right, you guys, so now to install the camp table, you're going to notice uh, we got this brackets here and this bracket here. So you're going to want this little like L bracket facing outwards. Same thing at the bottom, outwards. And then looking over here, these ones are also facing outwards just like that. So one thing you do want to take into consideration, these brackets, there is actually a left and a right. Looking here, so you're going to need to notice. So the top right here, you're going to notice on the L bracket, it's actually sticking more out versus the one right here at the bottom. It's more flush in towards the actual bracket. So let me zoom you guys in. So right there, it's close to this bracket. Up here, it's actually pointed outwards. So you want the outward section to be at the top. And then looking over here, it's going to be the same, as you can tell. This one's actually more out. The bottom one is actually facing more in. So you want it in this position like that. Up next, going back over here, we're going to now start assembling, of course, the table and the hardware. So let's get it. All right, so for this uh, section here, you're going to get some white little bushings. You want to go ahead and insert one on one side and then one on the opposite side as well. So once those things are installed, now you want to go ahead and move on to the brackets. All right, you guys, so one thing we did want to know is this one we actually tightened down all the way this bracket that bracket on that side still loose just so we can kind of adjust it if we need to um, and now we have of course our white bushings installed on each side so we're gonna now go ahead and slide it right in and then to go ahead and kind of take note on what bolts you're gonna need to use so you're gonna have some bigger ones and you're gonna have some smaller ones for the bigger bolts you should have only two the two are gonna actually go on the bottom right here the bottom section so one for this side one for that side and now for the four leftover smaller ones uh, those are gonna be uh, one's gonna go right here at the top and then one is gonna go on the actual table part which is what uh, comes up and down you guys will see all right so of course like I was saying in the beginning now we're gonna be using the bigger bolts at the bottom so just like that you want to slide it in make sure it goes all the way through and then same thing with the opposite side just make sure it slides right in just like that once you have that in place now you want to go ahead and get the nuts provided which are nylon nuts to go ahead and lock it in place you don't want to tighten it down just yet just go ahead and snug it by hand so now that you have it in this section here of course like i was saying don't tighten this down just yet just kind of leave it loose now we're going to be working with the cable over here so you're going to notice these like little pin things they're not attached to the actual cable you're going to need to slide them right in and then you're going to need to crimp them down uh, once you do that you want to go ahead and do the same thing of course to the other one and then we'll get to the install process of things but basically the way you're going to have it is one's going to go on the top and then one's going to go on the bottom of the table just that way when you have it fully open it's always sitting just like this that way it's not falling on its own like that without the wire that's what would happen so what we did here these uh, wires were a little bit slightly long so what we did is we kind of brought this up a little and we used a level just like this just to make sure everything's uh the camp table will sit straight reason why is because these are a little bit slightly too long so if you install them just like that the table's gonna actually sit too low so like i was saying we brought it up to with the level so once it was leveled we then cut the wire to size just like that and as you can tell now we've put both ends on we have a nut and one of the smaller screws on this side so that side is done uh, now we're just going to bring it up and put another uh, nut and screw towards the bottom so that way the whole side will be installed now as you can tell and of course right now we don't have it tightened down all the way we just kind of have it hand tight but you can see there now it's nice and straight so it won't be sitting all slanted so now we just got to do the same thing to this side as you could tell it's a little too long so we need to cut it to size so now that you had everything set up up next what you want to go ahead and do is in one of the baggies you're going to get like these uh things right here which these are kind of like magnets or clips i'm not sure 
but they actually lock into place which helps lock the table up here so it doesn't fall on its own so it's gonna come with this and then of course it's gonna come with the hardware as well we'll show you guys it's gonna come with that little black spacer and you're gonna want to put the smallest of the silver brackets on it right there and then it's also gonna come with these provided little screws here and little nuts as well which you're gonna have to install one on one side and one on the opposite side and then of course as you can tell this is the bigger silver one like i said you want to mount the smaller silver one at the top now with the two screws in there now he's putting uh, the nut through the back side and he's just going to hand tighten both and then after that he'll go ahead and uh fully tighten it down with the phillips head screwdriver so now that we have this here as you can tell it's still a little loose we still need to tighten it down of course with the phillips head but now we're going to be installing this bottom one this bottom one here it's going to actually go right here as you can see there's a hole there and a hole there so that's going to be installed right there and then as far as the hardware you're going to use same thing those two uh, little phillips head screws that are provided and then that's the screws will go on this side nuts will go on this side all right you guys so here is the finished product as you can tell there's the high clearance bumper with the awesome cuts so of course this one is the cbi off-road dual swing out uh, with the rotopax mount and of course uh, the spare tire mount so it looks really awesome now it's going to be a lot better for off-road because it is a lot more high clearance and of course it's steel so right now we're going to have uh, jerry just kind of display on how uh, you go ahead and open this and then basically how it works so first things first of course there is the latch so right now he's going to go ahead and show you guys how to unlock it so looking right here you guys so you just go ahead and i guess un unlatch it yeah i guess unlatch it man just it has a little clip right here so you lift it with your your finger push it out this thing is gonna come out and then obviously you can you have to do it one at a time obviously then open it and then your thing is gonna latch too Oh, right there heck yeah and of course this is the table that we just finished installing as you can tell there's little pins there that lock it into place and then you just go ahead and drop it down by force and there it is and then if you want to go ahead and close it you just literally pop it right back up make sure it clips into place and now it's all secure so now we're going to go ahead and open up the opposite side so that one's super easy it's going to have that same bushing there that's going to kind of lock it in place there it is so of course we still haven't finished installing the table on this side but the same exact steps that you did here you go ahead and do it on this side as well and then you have uh, your dual setup there so it's cool when you're camping you know because you'll have this uh, laid out like that then you bring down your table here and then you could bring down the other table there and now you have a whole workstation to go ahead and uh, do your cooking or whatever you want and then now we're going to show you guys how to close it so to close it you actually have to pull that ball up and then or release and then there it is so one thing i did want to note um right here we kind of wish it did have like some type of bushing on the bumper here because when it does make contact you're going to notice it kind of bangs like that so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be adding um like some stoppers here i'm just going to kind of uh, use some double-sided tape to stick it on so that way when i close it it doesn't hit as hard like that so i just wanted to take note on that uh it's be a good idea to do that and then for the same thing on this side you need to pull the little ball up and bring it in and then now you can go ahead and close it and then same thing you just bring up the latch now pull it right over and then bring it down make sure it clips in and it shouldn't move anymore so once i get home of course i'm going to go ahead and kind of just set up everything but we just wanted to show you guys just kind of how it looks right off the bat once it's installed once again if you guys do want something like this whether it's a front bumper rear bumper installation of suspension anything make sure to hit up jerry he got you guys so now that you guys did see uh, jerry do the whole installation as you can tell you guys can do it at home but trust me you guys might run into some issues you guys might not cut it right there's a lot of things that come into play when you're doing something like this especially if it's like a CBI off-road bumper that has a lot of puzzles to it so if you guys do need someone to of course install it for you make sure to hit up Jerry and if you guys do end up wanting to just go ahead and buy it check out the description box below for either the product or his information so anything you have to say oh well, nothing guys you guys already know you know if you guys ever need anything you know installation we have a uh, Boron products too so uh, check us out you know uh, Jesse's gonna leave all the information down below so um, yeah man we always here to help you guys out so no worries hell yeah and just check out his Instagram as well so if you guys did enjoy today's video please make sure to like comment and subscribe we'll see you guys on the next one peace Jesse,
It's super simple. Please feel free to subscribe.